Hello and welcome back to Polytoots. In today's lesson, we are going to be taking a look at some vertex deformation examples. And uh, in this video, we're only going to be focusing on the, the one on the left, the pipes one. And we'll cover the other ones in some other videos because I don't want this being too long. But uh, hopefully this should just be three short videos. So for the example of the pipe one, the goal is basically just to have something deform along it, regardless of the direction of the mesh and it's all based on uvs so just a quick look in blender at the uvs of this object starting with this straight pipe because it's the most simple if you can imagine a white line moving you know up and down this uv sheet it would correspond to the mesh you know in the same way because uh, the uvs are straight the object is straight everything's fine and so it's even the same on this other mesh it's basically just the straight pipe but i've just put a bend modifier on it and you know the mesh itself is bent but the uvs are still straight and you can take this even further with many different examples of course you can have this whole squiggly thing the uvs for this aren't strictly straight per se but they're straight enough okay so back into unity i've wiped everything we only have the mesh and we just create a new amplify shader and just you know call this whatever you want and we'll start off by placing down a UV coordinate um, just by hitting the U key and clicking. Or you can search for these things. And if you see it has a letter next to it, that means it's a uh, like a hotkey. So you press the letter and click, like subtract. It's just S and click. So we'll connect these together. So I'm going to subtract the V from the B slot and the subtract. And we'll create a float here. Uh, and this will basically be the start of our gradient. That's why we're only going with the V part of our UV coordinates because we only want the uh, the vertical. So we'll call this whatever. I'll turn it into a slider. Um, zero to one range should be fine. And then we'll put down another multiply, which again is just the M key and click. And then another float, which is just a one key and click. Uh, this one will be the width, uh, which won't make any sense right now. But if we multiply this by itself, so just put in another multiply and put them in both of those slots. The width will make a bit more sense now because if we take a look at the um, the example of the multiply on the right, we have our white levels on the top and the bottom now rather than just on the bottom. And you can see that the width actually adjusts the width. The problem is this is uh, inverted. So we need a one minus because we need to have a white bar because white will basically dictate, you know, what, where we want something to happen. You know, white is often like true, black is false. Um, white will push out a displacement black will pull it in you know th that kind of logic and then lastly uh, we'll just multiply all of that again with another float this time it would just be the uh, the strength or the power so once you have that bar uh, you can just determine you know how how strong it is you can see we have the scroller like the actual panner moving up and down we have width control and then we have power so all pretty good now we can actually just throw this in the emission slot just to see what it looks like on, on the mesh before we proceed. Oh, and also make sure that these are all properties. Looks like I was missing two. This essentially just ensures that it's visible in the material rather than hidden away within the shader. So after you've put this material and the shader on your object, uh, you can see how it works. And so far pretty good because we have the area that we want to affect the mesh. But if you notice our zero to one range on the panner, even at zero and at one, we can still see a bit of the white coming out. So this will, you know, this will affect the mesh later on as well. So ideally, you know, we should change this so that we can have like a full black mesh at the zero and the one. So you can see here, just as, as an example of that, you know, it's not ever going above the top and it's not ever going below the bottom. So that's what we need to fix. The simplest way to do this is to actually just change the range of our slider so we can go you know to like minus 0.5 and a maximum of 1.5 and so now you can see that it actually goes outside and this is all well and good but if you did want to have a 0 to 1 range still uh, you can use something called a remap and this will basically allow you to have your original slider as a 0 to 1 but you just put in some numbers to say what the old one and the new one will be so the old one is going to be a zero to one range because that's what we want our slider to be. And the new range will be the actual values that we want, which is the minus 0.5 and the 1.5. Just make sure you remember to go back to your original slider and change that back to a zero to one because you know that's what you want to appear on the material. 
And so just to needlessly drive this point home again, you can see here our pan range goes from a zero to one, but the actual uh, the white area that we have is going outside the bounds because it is going to minus 0.5 and 1.5. So that's done. We are finished with that bit. Back into the shader, I'm just going to throw down a quick color here just so you know I have something a bit more interesting to look at. Obviously on your side, I'm sure you'd be doing whatever textures and things that you want. It doesn't matter. For the actual vertex deformation, uh, we just get down a vertex normal node. And then we'll multiply that by the result that we already have. And we also want to put in a saturate node. And I'm using the Alt key here to click and drag over the line so it automatically creates the connection. Pretty handy. And we want this to go into the local vertex offset. Uh, make sure it's not the normal. Let's go have a look at what this does. As you can see, the, the bulge, you know, the vertex normal offset, it's, it's working fine. We do have an issue with the emission and then it's being burnt out. I'll probably just throw the saturate into that as well. That will fix it. But for you, the emission is, you know, it's completely optional. You can, if you want, use that whole system as a way to mask. So a new texture or a new color where something is bulging out of these pipes or whatever mesh you want to put this on. Um, it's completely up to you. You can completely forego it entirely. Like you don't need that in the emission slot or multiplied with albedo or whatever you want. The important thing in the tutorial, at least, is the vertex deformation part, which is, you know, just the vertex normal multiplied by that whole thing. And that's it. I leave the rest entirely up to you. You know, it's out of my hands. So that pretty much wraps it up for this shader. Uh, obviously, you can do a lot more with it. Maybe we'll cover some extra stuff in the future. But for now, this is just like the the basics of, you know, pushing out along vertex normals. I will just throw in some quick metallic and smoothness just because it looks nice. And, you know, it's supposed to be kind of like a pipe and pipes are kind of metalish. Although nowadays, I guess most are plastic. So I guess it depends what you're using the pipes for. Right. Let's not get all pedantic about that. So that will do it for this video. I thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. We will uh, cover more stuff in the next video. I think the next one will probably be the flower one and then we'll move on to the rug example from the uh, the beginning of the video or I'll have something on screen that you can look at now. Uh, and just to let you know, I do have a Patreon that's now open, uh, mostly because a lot of people keep asking me for, you know, screenshots of the node setup so they don't have to keep watching the video again to, you know, to cross reference their own nodes. And so that's all freely available on, on my Patreon. You don't have to pay. I would appreciate it, you know, if uh, there's anyone out there that is willing to support me. Uh, but it's completely optional. I'm not asking for your money at all. I'm just letting you know that Patreon is where I'm just hosting all this stuff because it's a lot easier than YouTube uh, descriptions. So, yeah, that's that. Um, that's my cheap, filthy plug. And I will leave it there. So, again, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been of use. I will see you in the next one.